Next on Rugby Wrap-Ups MLR Weekly, Major League Rugby highlights, opinions, previews, and Rugby World Cup talk with stars Chris Taruri, Matthew Drew Turner, and GM Steve Lewis. Welcome back to this week's MLR Weekly, as presented by Rugby Wrap-Up, Matt McCarthy in New York City. And we've got a huge show for you this week. Before we bring in our featured guests that you can see in the green room, let's take a quick look back before we look forward. Down San Diego Way, as Bruce Springsteen would sing, San Diego honored their cohorts with an improbable and exciting win over their Southern California rivals, the L.A. Giltinis. Moreover, the Never Say Die San Diego team keeps their playoff heart beating as they outlast the Giltinis 31 to 27. In Quincy, Massachusetts, the New England Free Jacks and the Atlanta Rattlers locked horns. Five players from each team had double digit tackles with Matt Heaton of the visiting ATL Rattlers leading the way with 18. But it was the two tries scored by New England that were the difference as the Rattlers only got into the try zone once. And once again, Bodine Waka was an integral part of a Free Jacks victory. The Dallas Jackals howled their way over the Canadian border, but went home whimpering with many a Toronto arrow in their hide. Six tries and seven successful kicks resulted in 57 points as the Canadian squad showed no mercy as per their desperate drive to keep their playoff hopes mathematically alive. Toronto lives another day and wins big. Going from Toronto to Houston, the Sabercats showed they had nine lives versus Utah, managing to claw their way to a victory against a very feisty Warriors team at the Cat's Meow trademark in Space City. Houston almost had a problem, but had five of the nine tries scored in this entertaining Western Conference matchup. The Sabercats end up on top. 31 to 27. Then it was over to the gold mine as New Orleans welcomed in Old Glory DC. Sure, there's that story about the head coaches going against each other, but all that went out the window as the hometown Nola Gold put in another what if performance showing skill and relentlessness that was missing earlier in the year. Nola easily wins a track meet 50 to 21. You really have to feel for the Seattle Seawolves after their loss to Rugby New York in Hoboken, New Jersey. A cross-country flight on Saturday, two hours on the tarmac, no captain's run, and hot East Coast weather almost did them in at the start. But they held on and gave an exciting New York team all they could handle and got the New York City crowd going too. New York wins a thriller. 30 to 22. All right, let's take a quick break and then bring in Mr. Chris Tarori of the San Diego Legion. Selling or trading in your vehicle? She makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at she -he. She -he .com. And we're back with Mr. Chris Tarori of the San Diego Legion. And Chris, you look more like a recording star than you do a rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm at my, my, I'm at home, my little office here. So, you know, I got a little, little lights, a little light set up here. So maybe that's what it is. You're really setting the bar high for these other guys that are coming on. I mean, you know, uh -oh. I, you know, you got Malcolm and you got Mitchell and <laughs> Mattias and oh, nice, you know, the, yeah. the, the whole crew of them are just awful. <laughs> You know? Awful. Oh, no, that's with, not good. With their production. I mean, look at you. Oh, yeah. You look like you're in a sound studio. You look like you're Appreciate ready to cut that. a track. Would you be singing or playing an instrument? Uh, I actually play instrument. Yeah, I've got a guitar over there in the corner. So See, I'd definitely I, be. Am yeah. I off base here or what, man? You're, you're pretty spot on so far. So, so you're, far like as... a, you're like one of those Renaissance guys, a rugby player yeah. and a musician. And oh, yeah. I suppose you, you can cook a little bit. 
A little bit, yeah. It's more of a baker than a cook. All right, now the gloves are off, guy. Okay, so now <laughs> we get down to the hard brass tacks, the tough questions where I'm going to grill you. But for, uh, you know what? I'm going to be a little bit nicer to you. Yeah, so before I attack you, I'm going to back okay. it up a little bit because you seem like a nice guy. Uh, you're kind of a big deal in Southern California rugby. I mean, you and your family. Yeah. Your sister plays. Your two brothers mm -hmm. play. You got on back and yeah. what, Aztec rugby, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So where do you come in in the line in the pecking order of the family? I am the second youngest. Um, so yeah, so my oldest sister, she she we actually grew up playing soccer. So my oldest sister, she played a lot of soccer. Um, and then it was actually my my brother, my second oldest. Um, he was the one that started playing rugby. And then me being the younger brother, wanted to play too. So myself, my two brother, uh, my other brother, uh, and then my youngest sister all played. So yeah, because you um, also played sevens. Yeah, yeah, I played sevens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I used to be a lot more mobile. Uh, USA right Rugby National Club sevens, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. USA Rugby Club, and then I was with the USA sevens program for a number of years as well with Mike Friday and and all those guys down there. So right. the, yeah. So comparatively speaking, and I know this is an impossible comparison, but the fitness of a Mike Friday, uh, mm. the demands of the fitness of Friday as opposed to playing 15s in a professional setup in San Diego. <laughs> Apples and oranges? Apples and oranges, 100%, man. The Yaki Yards down there at the sevens, sevens program are just unreal. Now we're in what we call the hospital pass, which is our okay. segment where I throw you questions that are a little awkward for you to answer, perhaps. Uh, we, right. see, we test you. We test you under right. pressure. So here we go. All with right. the hospital pass, arguably the worst named segment in rugby or sports entertainment overall. First question. Does New Jersey border West Virginia? New Jersey, oh boy. Yeah, we're going, we're, see what I did there? West Coast? Yeah, you know, you know, yeah. East Coast. I'm, uh, yeah. You can probably count the number of times I've been on the East Coast on one hand, so. Um, Is that your me, final answer, Chris? No, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. Oh, ding, ding, ding. That's a correct All answer. Right. Is right. a seawolf an actual well, I'm going to say no. You are correct, sir. What is yeah. a cohort? Cohort uh, is a, from my understanding, it's a group or a, a group of legionnaires, uh, soldiers. Yes. 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 So well, I guess the, the follow-up question is what is a legionnaire? Legionnaire is, uh, it's, uh, I guess, a, a soldier in the, in the legion, in the part of the, the army. Yeah, we'll, give him, we'll give him credit. I, I was looking right. for gladiator. Mm -hmm. If you were forced to, and I know that you'd have to be forced to, mm -hmm. Would you prefer a Giltini or a Gilgroni to drink? Giltini sounds a little more appetizing than the Gilgroni, I think. You know what? I, I was looking yeah. at you. I'm looking at your vibe. You got the mellow kind of thing there. I could just see you sipping more. <laughs> or a Giltini. Exactly. All right. Now, here's a category where your teammates have failed absolutely oh, miserably. No. Who is your favorite San Diego sports star of all time? I'd say probably Junior Seau. Ooh, he was that's a legend. Great answer. And he shows, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that somebody that lives in San Diego actually knows something about San Diego for the first time. <laughs> and that is the end of the segment, The Hospital Pass. You have passed with flying colors, Mr. Christopher. Uh, now let's talk a little rugby. You had a yeah, huge win. Huge win. Uh, some would arguably say improbable win, but you guys, it's definitely a season saving win. So how's the feeling in the clubhouse? I know that's a ridiculously obvious question, but it's, it's got to be a sense of relief that you're still alive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, yeah, the boys were just just buzzing last night. Um, and, yeah, they turned up and, you know, we had a great crowd as well last night. I um, mean, it was just an awesome atmosphere. So I mean, it feels so good to, to bring the win home just in front of the home crowd. And so, yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, final thoughts. Um, what do you want to say to the Legion fans out there? Oh man, well thanks, thank you so much for coming out last night. Obviously it was the last home game and uh, man, we felt the love and support. So thank you for, for coming out and uh, making a, a great last home game for the season and thanks for all the support the, you know, the whole season. Obviously we've got two more games to go. So, um, you know, stick with us and, and we'll see what we can do. So, all right. Thank you. Mr. Chris Terori, thank you, sir, for taking the time out to talk to us. Of course, thank you. I'm Guru. All right, let's take a quick break and then bring in our esteemed colleagues Steve Lewis and Matthew Drew Turner. I've been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. 
It has a taste and the flavor. What do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. And we are back, and we're, we're not back with Dan Power and Brian Ray. We're back with two esteemed rugby personalities on the American rugby landscape and indeed the global rugby landscape. And Steve Lewis, the general manager of Rugby New York and two-time coach of the year with USA Rugby and just a sevens guru. And also speaking of sevens, you can't talk about sevens without talking about Matthew Drew Turner, who's turned that sevens career, the, the spectacular one with England, into a career with the Seattle Seawolves in which he is now admin, coach, player, whatever you want to call it, he does it. Matt, welcome to the program. Guys, before we get going on the games that are ahead of us, Let's talk about just the one that you guys had in common. Matt, you didn't make the trip. You were busy out in Seattle uh, faffing about, but your Seawolves lost to New York. Yeah, the boys knew we, it was a must-win game for us. Um, obviously, didn't get the result that we, we were looking for, but uh, you know that, that's kind of the, the story of our season, losing games that we were in the hunt for. Um, but yeah, you know, 1-0 Steve Lewis. Well, first of all, it's just a... You know, such a pleasure to share the screen with the illustrious Matthew Drew Turner. Good. Yeah, the game, the game was was nip and tuck. I mean, we were both there. It was a point in it most of the way until that that sort of last penalty try. Um, for us, it was interesting because you know we're sort of committed to playing expansive, attacking, entertaining rugby. But that was we came out like that yesterday. But at the end of the day, we won that game through, through set piece. Um, so we we respect Seattle. A lot of great players. Um, impressed with quite a few of them. It, it wasn't. Uh, it was always going to be a 50-50 game, and it was. We're going to skip by that one now, fellas, because I can see there's a lot of bad blood, a lot of controversy going on between you two. Not at all. We, we get on wow. well. It's yeah, just we the Twitter versus a fire right now. They're on Reddit. They're talking about how you two just want to fight, but I'm not going to let that happen. We're going to talk about happier things. We're going to talk about. The United States of America getting two Rugby World Cups. It's a seismic moment for the game, right? What an opportunity, what a, what a fantastic potential game changer for, for this country. Um, men's and women's, right? 31, 33. I was just at, uh, I just at a PS45 in Staten Island doing a little session with some girls and, and you realize that it's, it's that age group, right? People who are 10 to 20 are the age group that are gonna be representing the states and other countries. So hopefully that's where our money goes. That's where the investment goes. That's what we've got to think about. But but what a what fantastic news! Can't wait. Matt, you're a guy that's played on the world stage in some of the biggest stadiums and in front of some of the best crowds, and you've retired about a thousand times from rugby, from sevens and from fifteens. Yet you're still playing both at any given point. Are you thinking of trying to find the fountain of youth to stick around and maybe compete? <laughs> No, I don't think I've got 10 years in me. Um, I say that now, but... You've been saying that for 10 years. I know, every year it's one more year, one more year. Um, but no, no. Going off the back of Steve said about the uh, the World Cup is awesome. It's, it's going to be huge for the sports here. Um, I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on MLR um, over the next couple of years uh, to showcase the sports and to grow it here. Um, but as Steve says, it's, it's not the current crop of boys that are going to be playing, boys and girls that are going to be playing. You know, so we have to, as franchises, invest now in the, the leagues below. You know, we have to come up with some form of club level sports or high school games um, put on by the franchises. And, you know, ownership hopefully are looking at that because end of the day, they're going to be what's going to drive the success of these World Cups in, in America. And you talked about pressure. USA Rugby is under obvious pressure to make sure that the funds that they're given to make sure these things happen are allocated properly. And we, we, we certainly hope that that happens. But guys, let's take a quick break and we'll come back talking Major League Rugby and talking about the games that we have ahead of us in this playoff run. We'll be right back. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with Steve Lewis and Matthew Drew Turner, and we have some really important matches. That's an understatement of epic proportions coming up in the Major League Rugby slate with the first one up, the Toronto Arrows hosting Eastern Conference rival, 
the New England Free Jacks, and Toronto is mathematically still alive here. I'm in Free Jacks' corner. I think they're a great team. I think they're, they, they're gelling on the field very well. They, they fight for each other. Um, I know they don't really have as much on the line as, as Toronto, but to me, the Toronto aren't the team they were last year and the years before. I think they're going to a rebuild as well. Um, my money's on Free Jacks. It's, this coming weekend. Down, you know, the playoff implications down, they're in, right? Cross. But they, they want to lock up home advantage. They, they want the buy, they want the, the, the rest, the ability to recharge their players to get a bit of a breather, and they want the home conference final. So so there's three games to go. Um, you know, they're in pole position, but I, I think Free Jacks have too much firepower. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the Free Jacks are, are poised to cruise right into that postseason in that pole position, and I think they're going to get by Toronto. The next one up, the Sabercats are going into old glory. Again, Houston are just, they're a tough team. You know, they're typical South African, you know, big, powerful runners. Give them the front Kutso. football, and they, you know, they, they're going to punish you. Um, and as, as you said, DC's got lots of injuries this season. They're kind of finding a bit of late, late season form, but I just think Houston will unfortunately have too much power uh, for DC. Uh, Houston, again, pole position, uh, game in hand. I don't think they're going to slip up. This is one, this is five points. I agree with Matt, too much firepower, too much talent for DC, I think. The next one up is Nola hosting the San Diego Legion, another one of your rivals, Matt. So we'll let Steve talk about this one first. Both teams, in my opinion, have a great deal of talent. I mean, New Orleans is starting to show a bit of their firepower in the backs you know we had a couple of uh, we had a tight game against them New York that is here um, San Diego talent all across the field as well but, but both teams scrapping uh, more on the line for San Diego so I, I'm probably I probably just think that motivation will propel them to a narrow win but you know as Steve says I think San Diego take this one um, again against everything my heart's saying but my mind's saying San Diego Take this one. Noel has been playing better rugby since the announcement that Kane Thompson's extension from the two-year contract came through. And that was basically they had a they had a very good second half against you guys, Steve, and then they've been playing pretty well since. Tough team to figure out. They are at home, but San Diego's got to win this one. I got to think that that investment in those veterans comes through this week for San Diego again. Steve, you're the general manager of the Dallas Jackals, and you're facing the L.A. Giltinis coming off a loss after you let up 57 points to Toronto. What's your strategy here? I mean, they, they've been on a, a hiding to nothing all year. Um, they've, had, they've had their share of injuries. As you say, the Giltinis lost, perhaps surprisingly, last weekend, and they still need points. So there's, there's going to be no mercy shown to Dallas. Um, and, I, and I think, unfortunately, it'll be another significant points total. Yeah, I thought Toronto, the Canadians, would show some mercy because they're just a generally more polite people than we are, but that wasn't the case. What's your take, Maddie? No, the same. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's all hard for Dallas at the moment. I know they're obviously now focusing on next season. Um, but as, as the lizard Steve says, uh, it is, you have to take your small victories out of this. Let's go into this game with the idea of, you know, collision dominance, you know, field position. Let's try to play a shape. Let's say, hey, how well can we play our shape? Is it our shape for next season? You know, let, let, let's take something out of this game. I do think LA's reserve team still puts 50 on, on the Dallas starting yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. But, you know, you, if you dig it for positives here, some of these players may be back and they're getting the opportunity to play against some very good players and test themselves and see what they're where they stand the next one utah warriors another tough a team that's you know kind of schizophrenic they play well in spurts enough to win but mostly to lose they're hosting the austin gilgronies yeah i felt utah are, are have been a, something of an enigma they have had um you know talent again across the board but just they've had, they've had a miserable year by their standards and uh, given what they could have had uh they've shown signs of life i still think you know, they can bite you in the arse. Um, so there's that potential for Austin, especially going there. It, it could be a banana skin game for them. Uh, on form, you go with Austin. But I, I think Utah have got more to them than their record suggests. Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's Gilgronis. Um, the Utah's looking great. 
to be fair, that watching them play this weekend, you know, they do they stab themselves in the back. Um, I just think Gilgronis across the board, they are they are so well uh, drilled and put together. Um, they've got threats across the across the board. They they will be looking to um, keep building. I don't think they've hit their straps yet. Um, I think they will be focusing in on the playoffs now, um, as they call it. They have locked in a spot. Um, but yeah, I think I think they keep on rolling. I think Utah doesn't have enough in the tank to go full eighty against the Gilbronies. Uh, agreed, agreed. I think Austin wins this by ten points or more, and continues their streak toward the top. Last match of the weekend has New York hosting Atlanta. And Steve, you were intrigued about another match, but I think this is the more intriguing match. Matt, this is one you could truly be objective about. What do you think? No, I think New York take this one. Um, you know, there's looking at the boys that are arriving, there's firepower, there's guys that uh, are looking to find some form. Um, it depends how the boys recover off the, uh, the, the game against Seawolves. So the bodies are holding up. <laughs> um, but I do, I do feel New York is sort of on a trajectory, um, or the right trajectory. Um, and Atlanta's kind of started off hot um, and has, has phased out a little bit coming to the end of the season. I don't know if it's a, again, a fitness thing or a squad depth side of things, or, you know, they, they don't have that killer instinct they had last season where they defended everything. They were, they were ruthless. They were on top of you the whole time. They got off the line. They put you under pressure, put your skills under pressure. I don't feel it's the same team as it was last year. So I think and, and you're not just saying this because there's a good chance that you'll be playing for the Ramblin' Jesters under coach Steve Lewis. No, no, that, that's a different sport. You know, sevens, I, I can get away with more. So. Yeah, but coach Mobsy as well, you know. Well, well I, you know, I didn't say, yeah. I, I, didn't, I wasn't dismissing mobs, of course not. Uh, but Steve? Yeah, I mean, it's just tough for you to talk about this match, but what do you oh, there's so much to say? I've got so much to share, I just can't share it. But, um, what, what is interesting about the way the schedule has worked out, though, is that the three teams who are pretty much going to make the playoffs New England, ourselves, and Atlanta are going to see each other a lot in this last month, right? We've got Atlanta at home, New England away, and whichever way the permutations work out, we're probably going to see Atlanta and hopefully New England again. So everyone, we're not at the stage, as you said earlier, we're not at the stage anyone can, you know, get too cute and rest players and all the rest, but you have to win games. So we have to go full bore this weekend and we're in. Atlanta have to go full bore in, in order to stay level. So this, this weekend will be blood curdling stuff, I think, in Hoboken. Um, so I'm looking forward to, you know, another, another great day on the wrong side of the river. Well, you don't tell a Jersey boy, which I am, that it's the wrong side of the river, Steve. Watch, you know, you got another room a little bit here. But I, I agree with you. This is a match that um, fortunately I'll be at there. I'll be there. I'll be there witnessing it in person. But if I was a fan, this is one I would tune in for. This is one I would try to show up for. It's going to be a very good one. And, you know, there could be some big stars in this one. You never know the lineups. They change. Uh, right up until the last minute because of injuries or sicknesses or whatever, but this is one to watch. And I think New York might come out on top of this one. And just like that, guys, we're out of time, but we have time for final thoughts. Steven? I think you have to go back to the World Cup, right? It's the most significant thing that's happened, certainly this week and this season. And what it might do is afford all of us the opportunity um, the kumbaya moment, right? To get our act together, set aside some previous disagreements and start sort of forging a common path. I think USA Rugby, we have to get over our sort of tribal stuff. We have to get over some of the politics. And this is perhaps the sort of moment that we can coalesce based upon something like this. I know that's not Brian Ray relentlessly negative, but it is how I'm feeling today. <laughs> a little jab, a little zing at Brian Ray of America's Rugby News and Matt. Yep, uh, to pump Steve's tires, not saying it's New York. I think we're going to have an East Coast MLR champion this season. Who's the best team in the league right now, Matt, other than the Seattle Seawolves? <laughs> uh, I'm going Free Jacks. Ooh, all right. Okay, so he just picked the Free Jacks to win 
the shield in Major League Rugby, and I can't follow that up with anything. I just my my final thought is that I am just honored to be talking to you two, talking rugby, and we've got the fifth season almost over professional rugby, and we got World Cups coming. I mean, who would have thunk? What is that whole thing about the sleeping giant? Maybe it, they're the cliche, it's awakening. Who knows? But at least it's stirring. And thank you, gentlemen, for coming on. And thank you for tuning in. It's much appreciated. Uh, we'll see you next time. But in the meantime, check out our other shows, including the Rugby Odds, our college rugby wrap-up. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. And please, please, please sign up for our American Red Cross Blood Donor team.